In 8.8, we're going to look at how energy gets transferred around the globe because uh, we've got all this energy coming in as well from the sun's energy. So uh, our climate is pretty good at moving around energy because the Earth's surface heats unevenly. So there are some areas that are able to uh, absorb a lot of heat and there are other ones that are not so much. So while water, air, and land all heat up and cool at different temperatures, water is actually really good at taking a long time to heat up. And, uh, and so it's got a high heat capacity. Then uh, air and land, they heat up pretty easily. So when you have all these different substances, you get all this uneven heating and uh, cooling at different rates. And like I just said, water can store a lot of energy and it's, it's said to be a good heat sink. So what we need to look at in this section is the main process by which energy gets moved around the globe, and it's called a convection current. We've touched on this in a previous section as well. So essentially, warm things rise and cool things sink. So looking at our picture here, you can see how energy, I guess, because, uh, you know, again, it's coming directly at the equator. That's why our warmest parts here are at the equator. Uh, you've got uh, you get energy that starts to, and you can follow these little arrows here if you will, energy starts to move up in this direction. At the same time, you get a cooling effect just above, and so you're getting energy moving down. So essentially, you're getting these convection currents happening on the globe at a giant scale. You get energy moving uh, away from the equator up to the poles. At the same time, cooler stuff is coming down from the poles and going to the equator. It's just one big giant cycle. So that's one way energy is moved around via a convection current. You can see a convection current if you want, even in uh, something as in a science class, you've got a tank of water, you put in some uh, warm water with food coloring and cold water with a different color of food coloring and uh, the, the hot will rise at the top and the cold will rise at the bottom. Uh, additionally here, the prevailing winds can affect the climate zones. So uh, all of this energy being moved around is creating winds around the globe that is distributing the energy at different places. Now, there's another one, too, that acts. They kind of act together. And this is the thermohaline. And this is just standing for salt water. So salt water is, that says salt. That's going to be, uh, well, because oceans are made of salt, right? So what happens here is you get this conveyor belt. And you kind of start anywhere you want. Uh, the red stands for hot. So the water is moving. The hot water is moving up in this way. And then when it gets up to this point, it actually cools off. And it starts to sink back down. So whatever land masses are near these places are going to be hot or cold. The salt water is it's itself actually makes it more dense too, and so that's going to cause these things to uh, to sink perhaps more than they normally would. So again, it's just a convection current, and you add in salt, and uh, and again these things are warming different areas. 